ourselves back together and figure out why we can't succeed economically and why other people are running us. We need to put our hand in God's hand and not in Barack's hand. J- and that's J- why I'm against it. Re- Reverend Manage, do you, do you think that Barack Obama will be better than George Bush? Do I think he'll be better? Yes. I think he'll be far worse than Bush has ever been. Barack Obama, politically, if you want to talk policy now, not spiritually or socially, uh, just in general for the nation and for the world, Barack Obama uh, is perhaps the most God-hating, anti-Bible, anti-moral, social uh, person in the Senate today. And, and, and he, all of his colleagues will tell you that it is so. And as a result of that, uh, he's going to do far worse for us uh, if he were president, which will never happen, uh, than Bush has ever dreamed of being. Do you think uh, that Hillary Clinton would be a better president than Bush? Uh, you know, if, if you want to know the truth, I don't think any of them are any good. I mean, I don't. I, so I you don't know. Man. <laughs> I'm just trying to deal with black people, not putting their hopes in someone that's going to make their lives better, and we end up like South Africa. We need the Lord. We need a major move of God on us as a nation of people. Stop killing one another. Get our black men to stop making babies and these young girls and not marrying them and leaving these children to grow up in strife and hunger and in poverty and in want and in gangs. We need to stop that. We got 70% of our families, our, our women heading our households. That needs to stop. We've lost Harlem here as a community with Charles Rangel and all these other people and David Dinkins and still we can't even hold on to our own community. We, we need to stop that. We need to, we, we need to take a careful look at ourselves and it's all always been about people like Barack. If it wasn't Wrangler, it's Barack or somebody else that we think okay. some politician is going to benefit. Barack is an emissary of the devil, and we need to know that. He's going to destroy us. Reverend, Reverend Manning, we touched on it a little bit earlier um, with um, Pastor T.D. Jakes, but you have um, a missionary um, called the Witch Doctor Project. That's right. Um, exposing the Magnificent Seven, um, which includes Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, Bill Clinton, T.D. Jakes, Louis Farrakhan, Don King, and Cornell West. Um, what what is it about what is it about them that you um, you're trying to expose, and what separates you from those seven? Well, first of all, I want to uh, make it clear that everybody knows that I'm not a Clinton supporter either, because people tend to think because I'm against Barack, I'm for Clinton. Nothing could be further from the truth. Mm-hmm. When Bill Clinton was on the Arsenio Hall show with those sunglasses on playing that saxophone, I'd scream worse than I'm screaming now against Barack. Black folk don't fall for this okie doke. It's nothing but okie doke. But they went for it, and look what it got them. Now they're going. Now they're falling for Barack. It's going to be worse with him. I mean, black folk routinely make the wrong decisions. They've made wrong decisions throughout the history of their journey here in America, and they're getting ready to make the worst wrong decision that they've ever made. Now, having said that, uh, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, again, are all wrong decisions. Cornel West and everybody else I've got on that, Magnificent Seven, uh, well, they're, which, they're really not the Magnificent Seven. I've changed that. Uh, but they're wrong decisions. They're looking to the wrong people to lead us. And, and Bill Clinton and Jesse and Al and, and all these people need to be exposed as to who they are. Okay. And, and what separates you from those seven? Why? Why are not? Why are, are you not included in? Why is it not the magnific- magnificent eight instead of the magnificent seven? Because <laughs> you talk about lifting blacks, and all them people are talking about lifting blacks up. Y'all got some things in common there. Wouldn't you agree? Listen, I think that when you look at what happens with the leadership and the source of which and the end result of the leadership of those seven, you will discover there has been no lifting of blacks. If we'll just take Clinton and General and Jackson, who was his personal priest, you do remember that Jackson was the personal priest uh, and religious uh, advisor for the William Jefferson Clinton. Uh, during his administration, uh, the more black men went to jail than ever in the history of any nation on this planet, including the Russian gulag. I mean, there has never been a time when black folk have suffered, have committed more crimes, and have had a worse opinion of themselves than under Jesse Jackson and William Jefferson Clinton. And here comes baby Jackson, who is sharp. Often emerges uh, under the influence of Jackson. They're not comrades. They don't really like each other. But he begins to get popular here in New York City because police are shooting people down in New York City, black men down in New York City, like it was like it was they were shooting ducks out in Wisconsin somewhere. Uh, 
but and so his leadership is also a failed leadership and since jackson has been the high priest of black america and the personal confidant of weight confident of william jefferson clinton and had been assisted in a national scene by people like al sharpton we have done worse we have had more police shootings under their leadership than any other people a person a time even during the time of marcus garvey and the time of malcolm and and, and, and the honorable elijah Muhammad. There were not the kind of police shootings. They shot a guy out there in, in Los Angeles while Malcolm was head of the mosque here in New York City. He went out there, and that was a that was an isolated incident. They shoot black men today since Sharpton has been the leader, since Jackson and since Jakes and, 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 and Clinton have been the so-called leaders. of. We are doing far worse. Get rid of them before there will be no more black people to shoot down under their leadership. Uh, and, and we do appreciate you again for sharing your opinion on here. Um, a couple more things before we do go. Um, I, um, some statements that you had made about black men, you said that they, they come to work late. They do, um, don't appreciate the job. They get um, get attitudes when you confront them about that, and then they cry racism. Um, got to do something about that. We have got to do something about that. We've got to let people, black people, know starting from an early age, and that's one of the projects we've called the Nile River Project. We've got to let black folk know that unless a business is making money, it can't pay the payroll. Black folk have got to know when they go to work for any man's organization, white or black, they need to be there to help that organization make money, not just take up time and hide and, and then wait for a paycheck at the end of the week. They've got to fully participate in the process of making that business strong and making it grow. And they also got to understand that really most people who are in business and who are trying to got small business or large businesses, they want their business to grow. They want to pay their bills, pay their taxes. And so anyone who is studious uh, about their work on any job will get promoted. Uh, that's not, we have been under the slave mentality. I remember as a young boy, you know, and listened to other young boys on my first jobs here in New York City. We used to call them slaves rather than jobs, rather than opportunity. Man, I got to go to that slave. Say, yeah, job, got to get up, go to that slave. We got to wipe that out of our thinking process and send our young people to these jobs with the whole idea of making that corporation successful and then they can become managers and leaders and then perhaps run their own corporations and when you go to a black business oftentimes and not everyone but most of the time you get a shoddy representation you get poor service and poor quality that has got to change and everybody knows that we show up late we got a thing called color people's time there's no chinese time there's no asian time there's no but we got a thing called color people's time when we show up, that's when time, uh, everything gets started. That's got to stop because time is money. And and I understand that. Um, but regardless, um, if you you know people agree with your opinion or don't, don't don't you think some some things are are um, discussed in house rather than um, out in public to instead of giving you know uh, people fuel on the reasons not to hire black people. We already have um you know problems getting jobs and. And, um, you know, encouraging black people to go look for work. But then um, we publicly tell other races how how um, you feel we are. And, and then that just gives them more fuel to not, not hire us, give them, give them an excuse to not hire us. Well, you know, whether it's done publicly or behind closed doors, uh, you know, I have been preaching here in this community for a goodly number of years. Uh, and within the context and confines of the four walls of the church where I preach and wherever else people will let me speak. Uh, but the it, it kind of goes in one ear and, and goes out another. And let me also address this because I'm sure your listeners may be concerned about why would a pastor uh, speak as I'm speaking. I think that you need to know that I will never get up and speak unless the Lord speaks to me. And even though the language that I've used, such as the language of a bastard or trash or whoring, all those are biblical terms. Now, most people who are looking to stay popular and want to be able to get money, want to keep people happy, because when they're happy or they don't feel challenged in that way, you know, they'll give you money. But I've never said anything about any of these people that is not biblical or cannot be found in a biblical root. And when they talk about Jesus, so these churches have been following people like Billy Graham made Jesus some little sissy tip going through the tulips that has never said anything 
strong to anybody. It was Jesus, you remember, that took the, the rope and beat the, those religious people out of the temple. It was Jesus that called them a bunch of hypocrites and a, and a whitest sepulcher. And it was his cousin, John the Baptizer, that called